We're good to start. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is the Planning Commission for the City of Columbia Heights. Tuesday, July 6 is the agenda. Uh, attendance information for the public. Members of the public who wish to attend may do so in person by calling 1-312-626-6799 and entering meeting ID 828-8793-6929 and passcode 992-842 or by Zoom with a link that I'm not going to read. <laughs> for questions, uh, uh, please call Community Development. Uh, this is a call to order, a roll call for the commissioners. Uh, Karen Dino, not present. Kaiser? Here. Here. Uh, Nowitzki? Here. Boyum? Here. Wolf? Here. And Vargas? Here. Um, I guess at this point, I'd like to see if someone could set a motion to approve the minutes from the May 4 meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, motion by Sino, seconded by Hoyam. Uh, is there a roll call or are we eyes and nays to, to approve the all in favor for the approval of the May 4th um, minutes? Aye. 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 Looks like the ayes have it. <clears throat> uh, item number two, uh, or the, a public hearing. For the conditional use permit to convert a single family home into a duplex with a detached garage at 3927 Hayes Street Northeast. A motion to. Oh. Not quite yet. I'll present yeah. now. <laughs> oh. Yes. Um, um. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, so the first public hearing item um, this evening is for a conditional use permit to convert a single family home into a duplex with a detached garage at the residential property located at 3927 Hayes Street Northeast. The existing home is proposed to remain in its current location with an addition in the rear while the second unit is proposed to be constructed above. The existing detached single car garage will be demolished and replaced with a, a detached two car garage in the southeast portion of the lot. Conditional use permits may be granted to properties in the R2A zone for one and two family residential district that meet the zoning standards. The lot in question meets the zoning standards as does the proposed development. The comprehensive plan guides this area for low density residential, which is between three and 7.5 units per net acre. Under those guidelines, the site is guided for up to 2.69 units. The two proposed units fall in line with the comprehensive plan for low density residential development. The existing single family home was constructed in 1957 prior to today's zoning standards and does not comply with the current five foot setback for the side yard. This is considered a legal nonconformity and all additions through this project shall comply with today's required five foot side yard setback. You can see that here in the southern portion. The zoning ordinance requires a minimum of two on-site parking spaces per unit with two total enclosed spaces for a two family dwelling. The proposed plans show a sizable detached two-car garage and four on-site parking stalls behind the proposed duplex, which exceeds the minimum required on-site parking standards. City staff received phone calls, emails, and a mailed note from community members expressing concerns related to the proposed increase in density on the site. Some topics of concern also include traffic, rental opportunities, uh, public safety, community character, and parking. Staff address these issues to the best of their abilities, explaining how the conditional use permit can allow for the development of a duplex on this lot and the mitigation of the issues previously listed. The conditional use permit shall be co conditioned to comply with building code, stormwater regulations, as well as all other city zoning codes pertaining to the development of a duplex. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission recommend approval to the City Council of the proposed conditional use permit um, and I am available here for any questions. Would, would it be at this time that we open up for the community uh, meeting to begin? Sure. Well, I think if there if are anyone questions, has questions. From the commissioners, commissioners to first. the staff or the applicant first, and then uh, open up for public comments. So, uh, apologies. So, if any of the commissioners have any questions at this time, would we uh, like to present them? All right. I do. You keep saying can. 
be permitted. Does that mean we have to permit it? Does not mean you have to permit it. I this mean, is it, why and, it's and, and coming. If it looks like a a dumb project. I mean, that's kind of <laughs> it doesn't look like a good idea to me. But is that any reason to say no? So the project, as proposed, does meet uh, as proposed and conditioned does meet the city's zoning standards. Okay. Um, the reason it goes forward to a um, conditional use permit, so it's not permitted by right, they don't just work with staff to get this approved and developed. It allows for a public forum, it allows for community input, um, but of course staff does their their due diligence and they make sure that the project does meet the zoning standards mm -hmm. and can, is conditioned accordingly. Now you are not the final voting body on this, you are only recommending approval to the city council, so if that it does happen tonight, this would go forward to city council on Monday. Either way it'll go before the city council, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other comments or questions? I don't have any at this time. At this time, would we then open the meeting to the public? Uh, meeting is open to the public for comment. Anybody? Uh, let's start with anyone in the council chambers that wants to speak. Approach the podium first, and then we'll go to Zoom from there. I think we've got two Zoom attendees. Anyone in the audience want to? Okay. So then, um, Zoom participants, would you like to provide comment at this time? And we could start with, uh, who is that Gail on top? Gail, would you like to provide comment? Comment, no, but I just had a question if there were any other um, rezoned properties in the area that, had, uh, that were zoned for multiple families. So the zoning designation for this site is R2A, and that is actually the largest zone in the city. Um, many properties in the city are zoned residential one or two family development. Um, the reason this project is able to move forward, I often get calls and questions as to if someone can um, convert their property into a duplex and after research, the, the answer is usually no um, because they usually don't meet the minimum lot size for a duplex. This property, however, does meet the minimum lot size for a duplex and so they've gone underway of this application to get a conditional use permit passed um, for the development of a future duplex. So if a property is zoned R2A, they can go through a conditional use permit, but they want to make sure that their lot size and their proposal meets the zoning standards. Does that answer your question? Not exactly. Um, I was just wondering, uh, in terms of numbers, if there were other, uh, other duplexes around <laughs> to... Oh, okay. to so yeah, there, there are some duplexes, not immediately adjacent, but maybe a block or two away. Um, as you, if you pull up our zoning map in the city, existing duplexes are listed as R3, or sorry, I'm sorry, R2B. Um, and so you could take a look at that on the zoning map. If you do, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in as part of the presentation, there's a cul-de-sac nearby on Hay, Hay Street that does have a few duplexes there. Okay, thank you very much. What is the second name I'm having? Cynthia? Chata. Chata, would you like to provide comment or questions? There we go. I, um, this is Stephanie. My mother's logged into my Zoom in the past, so it identifies me as her. But I'm here for the uh, La Casita patio. Okay, so, that sounds good. Thank you very much. We'll get to that one short. Yep. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah, so it looks like the lot is 52 feet wide. Mm -hmm. 60 foot is pretty, pretty common in the city. And you say this meets the minimum size, yet it's pretty narrow? So it's for square footage. It's the square footage that actually... Do with lot width. Not lot depth or not lot width. Right. When this design... Um, that obviously has been considered from a design perspective because often we see duplexes as side by side. Uh, in this case, it's go, it's one unit above the other, which is also common. But when I think duplex, I automatically think side by side. They've they've recognized their lot with shortage and have gone above. Real tough question. When was this uh, uh, 
the rules put into place on R2, R1. So I've been trying to dig into that. It looks like it might have been the 90s. Our zone calls out a certain year um, in regards to duplexes of lots created um, for the minimum size. I want to say 95. It might have been earlier than that. 95? Oh, that's yeah. Well, the yeah, last significant yeah. overhaul was 2001, where we did a substantial um, zone reworking zone. Of, of the vast majority of the code. A uh, question for city staff. There was, uh, there's a couple of conditions seen here uh, calling for revisions to the plan, most notably the size of the garage. Yeah. Uh, how are conversations with the applicant been regarding those issues and, and has resubmittal happened or will it happen before city council takes action? So staff had been working um, with this applicant since the month of May, um, working on refining the plans. And that was one final thing um, that didn't make it through the last correction. Um, but it has been conditioned to do so. The applicant has been notified that in order to approve this, the, the height of the garage must be lowered. And so in order for this project to move forward, we, we haven't received a redesign. However, we have incorporated it as a condition of approval. I think it's a, it's a good question to ask the applicant and see where they're at in the process. If, if you could provide comment on revised plans for the garage, that just so everyone's aware that you guys are aware of that stipulation. Yes, I was aware of this. Can you come up to the, yeah, thank you. I'm the architect of the Biden Heart for the project. Um, Minerva, Minerva uh, advised me that um, the size of the garage had to be 1,000 feet or less yep. in order to meet uh, regulations, which I changed. Mm -hmm. That's, I failed to change the height to a lower dimension, but that's an easy thing to do, yeah. which of course I will do, to comply. So it's in progress. Sure. Um, and I think staff are comfortable through the building permit process to, to ensure that that plan is approved as conditioned. But uh, yeah, significant standard that we, that we have to be mindful of um, right. and make sure everyone's aware. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I, I have a, a, a comment or a question for, for city staff regarding the it's been mentioned that the size of the structure for the garage is in question and, and, and is likely not to get approved. Is there a minimum or a maximum size that we know of that would, would be? And Because and, what I've heard is height, but I'm, in my mind, I'm looking at a, a, a roof that's shedding water down a slope a foot away from the neighbor's property with a slope that is greater than 6%, and I'm just curious if that is gonna yeah. be addressed as well. So to go back to the size of the garage question, the original size submitted to the city was 1,050 square feet. The maximum size of all accessory structures on a lot in the city of Columbia Heights cannot exceed 1,000 square feet. So that's why they've redesigned to create a, a garage that does not exceed 1,000 square feet. Um, in regards to the height of the structure and, and drainage issues, this, the the project has been conditioned to prevent any cross lot drainage. So all drainage must occur on site and that's per our public works department engineering. Oh, okay, thanks. So regardless of the current height and design or if they change the height and design, it is to be, um, it is to not allow for any cross lot drainage there. Okay, thank you. Just as a, a general comment, I would just like to say that I'm I'm really in favor of this. I think that providing um, ways to add new residents to our single family districts is really important when we have such a housing crisis in a city that's built out and doesn't just have open fields that we can fill with new homes. And as somebody who lived in a duplex for more than 10 years, I also enjoyed looking at the, uh, uh, at the layout that the architect drew up. And um, this just looks like a, a very pleasant place to live, whether it would be for, you know, people at any stage of life. And um, I like the fact, um, as you were describing earlier, Minerva, that it's not a side-by-side -side duplex, but 
so it doesn't add bulk to the street or change the character visually of the neighborhood that it's in, and that it also is adding additional parking, both surface and in an expanded garage, and all of that would be behind the primary structure. So I think this seems like a wonderful thing and would like to see more of this and think we will see more of this in the coming years since we have such a housing shortage. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Commissioner Kaiser. Uh, any, any further comment from the commissioners? I do have one question for staff. As far as utilities servicing the property, will any updates need to be made for electrical, sewer, anything like that? That's a good question. Uh, sewer service would be their responsibility as well as electrical. The utilities in the street can accommodate this additional unit, but um, I don't know the, if the architect would has any information related to services and upgrades necessary um, for power and uh, uh, condition of existing sewer do you do you have an, uh, an awareness of those no, no not really no. yeah That's, uh, that's the minimum Electrical usually does get upgraded in these projects when homes are of that age. Um, those are all things that are tight that are tightened up at the building permit stage of things. Here we're more so focused on the use of can you know shall shall we allow for two family dwelling here? And then all the details, of course, do get do get vested out through the building permit process. Thank but you. yeah, as we all we always know, electrical does. But for for sewage. Um, and that usually our public works would let us know up front and since they haven't really made that a, an urgent call we're assuming that it will be okay but in the building permit process we will route it to them again to ensure that okay an Thank additional you. unit brought onto the city's system will play pay the sewer access charge that gets deferred to the Metropolitan Council okay. a, a SAC fee mm -hmm. um, so that'll be part of this process as well Thank you uh, any any further comment from the commissioners? I, I do have a, a question specific to the uh, for city staff specific to the electrical. Uh, I'm not sure if Columbia Heights has this stipulation, but in an addition where the walls are stripped to the studs, those walls, the features in those walls are to be brought up to a modern code. So is that addressed in the in the plan that, or is that not a rule in the city of Columbia Heights? Again, we'll have to defer to the building official. And um, are you talking specifically electrical codes or just energy, everything? Uh, I'm talking it, everything because it looks like the new basement is deeper and to get water to flow uphill is kind of a trick that I'm not sure that any engineer has been able to manage anywhere but paper right. and uh, just some other things. And there is a power pole in the front yard with some guy wire, so I'm wondering if there is also an electrical easement in the front yard, if that plays a role in determining the total lot space. Oh, the easement area, if it's, in, if it's within the, the lot lines, would be calcul calculated within the total lot area. If, it, if it's an easement over their property, I'd have to see the, I'd have to look at the survey, Commissioner Vargas. Um, but yes, um, anything within their boundaries, and I think they're significantly over the, the required square footage amount in this case. So... I don't think they're relying on easement area to, to push them over the, yeah, yeah. if that's if that's the question, yeah. Uh, the, the question was just that, you know, how it was addressed, because again, with that deeper basement, you know, the sewer to get it to, to flow, and then if the external studs that you'll have to upgrade the uh, old plumbing and electrical, um, and sometimes it, get over, it gets overlooked, I guess, because yeah. it's not a specific statewide right. uh, precedent, it's municipality to municipality, so. I'd have to defer to the building official and then the state electrical inspector. I know that when we open walls to to the stud, as you say, and in Tarot Cheat Rock, um, they have to be rebuilt uh, to today's energy code a lot of the times or to the, the maximum capacity. They'll have to be insulated um, with um, modern insulation, and anything electrical is going to be um, supervised by the, the state inspector. 
so downstream from from here yeah oh, th thank you um so we'll have to close the public hearing if we're at that point and then consider uh, a motion so if there is no further comment from the public we would uh, like to get a motion to recommend that the planning commission recommend to the city council approval of the conditional use permit for the proposed two-family development to be located at 3927 Hayes Street Northeast, subject to conditions of approval. First, we have to do the um, yeah motion to waive. Well, close the public hearing, so you can just do that, and then uh, move to waive the reading. Um, close the public yeah. hearing and waive the reading of the whatever. Yeah. There's plenty yeah. of copies around. Yeah, that? that works. It can be a joint. I, that other one was just practice for my next step, so here goes. <laughs> Motion to waive the reading of the draft resolution attached, there being ample copies available to the public. Seconded. And, yeah. Thank you, Eric. Right. Motion seconded. And then I'll move to recommend that the Planning Commission recommend to the City Council approval. Oh, wait. We need to take a vote, vote on that oh, first. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so, yeah. This would actually be a roll call vote. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, no. And <laughs> waiting on a second. Yeah, oh, second from I Eric. Or, yes. yeah. <laughs> and then we can we can have a voice roll vote. <laughs> yep. So at this time, we can vote ayes and nays. Yes. Uh, all the ayes. Aye. Aye. Nays. I guess the eyes again have it. Perfect. <laughs> okay, Tom. <laughs> Small <Just> thing. <laughs> okay. Um, I will move to recommend that the Planning Commission recommend to the City Council approval of the conditional use permit for the proposed two family development to be located at 3927 Hayes Street Northeast, subject to the following seven conditions of approval as listed. Seconded. Motion second. We move to a vote. Ayes and nays. Ayes. Aye. Aye. Nays. Ayes have it. Um, so this will so this will go forward to the plan uh, the city council on Monday at 7 p.m. So that ends the. The 3927, we can move on to item number three now, the site plan review for a patio addition at La Casita Mexican Restaurant located at 5085 Central Avenue Northeast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, a motion uh, to move to waive the reading of the resolution number One two. Hang on. Oh. We're gonna. Minerva will do her yeah, presentation. We'll do See what happens when we skip one meeting. <laughs> Oh, good. We, we're okay. We're, we're almost there. We just, <laughs> we just, I sat out in the hall. <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take our time, and this is <laughs> when no the problem. When talk, I sit in the hallway usually, so this is a big <laughs> thing for me being here. And you're doing great, so we got this. So our final public hearing item this evening is a site plan review for the construction of a patio edition at La Casita Mexican Restaurant located at 5085 Central Avenue Northeast. Oh, sorry. The proposed patio is, here, is 903 square feet and meets the city's zoning code requirements for setbacks and height. The city's zoning ordinance requires approval of a site plan review by the Planning Commission for all new development plans, excluding one and two family residences. The site is located on the city's primary commercial corridor and the proposed patio is separated from adjacent residential properties by an adequate distance. Additionally, the site has adequate on-site parking to sustain the proposed patio addition. The existing 8,169 square foot restaurant building seats 247 people, while the proposed patio seats 44 people, totaling 9,072 square feet and two 191 patrons. Per city code, only 88 parking stalls would be required. However, the applicant has 136 parking stalls available, exceeding the minimum standard. The site plan review shall be conditioned to comply with building code and city zoning codes, as well as minimize noise impacts and comply with the city's design guidelines. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the site plan review for the proposed outdoor patio addition at La Casita Mexican Restaurant, and I'm available for any questions. I'm curious if you did hear from neighbors. I live somewhat nearby this, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm just curious, it's such a, kind of an interesting location where there is a good distance between 
this, these businesses and the single family homes, but because it's somewhat of a, a hillside, you know, I'm just curious if anybody, um, you know, called or wrote in with concerns. I did not receive any mail, any emails, or any phone call regarding this project. I know we do have Stephanie online, and she may have some comments, whether positive in support or in opposition. Um, but no, I did not receive any um, re comments from residents. And I think the proximity of that from residential is probably why. Yeah, it's a pretty big distance. I would say maybe mm -hmm. uh, even a football field, if not a little more. I can tell you that it didn't meet the, our notice that goes out 350 foot radius from the site did not reach too many residential properties. Yeah, there were sense. some, but not many. That makes sense. Thank you. So if this patio would have been built when the original restaurant went in, it would have been a side, just yeah. build it and go on. Right? Yeah, as part of the full yeah. approval, yeah. Right. It's a change in occupancy is really the trigger for site plan review in this case, because mm -hmm. it's not a full building addition, mm -hmm. but there's that caveat in the code that says any change of occupancy yeah. brings I, us to the I site plan. I agree with plan. Tom. It's kind of out of the way. And it's almost too bad it wouldn't be visible from the street just because it would add some life to yeah. Central that isn't Absolutely. a parking lot. Yep. It's a tough call, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it makes our job a little easier. Do people on the patio enjoy the highway or do they enjoy <laughs> Probably not. a little more? But right, I, w in staff's opinion, we look at it and think, yeah, this is a really great site for a patio and um, surprised that they hadn't maybe considered it sooner. Uh, with all of that space and excess parking. Mm -hmm. So I think they did open a small uh, outdoor dining on the front of the building during COVID with the special restrictions that the city offered for outdoor dining. Um, and I think that might have prompted this bigger conversation and, and looked into it, you know, because they were successful in that endeavor. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, no, if there's no further staff questions, um, we would open the public hearing and take comments from our Zoom participant then, I think. Open the public hearing. So uh, this time we'd like to open the meeting to public um, input. Is there any public input? Yes, please. Go ahead, Steph. Uh, thank you. I wasn't clear as to where it was gonna be. I mean, their lot is pretty big. So we're saying that that's going to be on the northeast corner of the building. And uh, so it's off of 50th and kind of over in the area where the bins are. And I'm looking out my kitchen window as I look at that parking lot. Um, I don't really have a concern about a patio out there, but what has happened since Planet Fitness has moved in and that whole uh, two acre of grass lot has been turned into a parking lot. We now have people dumping furniture by the dumpsters on a regular basis and the trash blows from the west to the east. So I'm out there picking up napkins and receipts and bags and food remnants and things like that on a weekly basis and I can usually go out in my yard and pick up a bag and then fill it so those are a couple of my concerns I guess I'm just kind of wondering how this is going to be terraced in so that when when the uh, debris goes flying from west from, from west to east and it comes into my backyard what a, how are they capturing that so that I'm not picking up even more trash out of my yard I don't think I have a concern with noise. They close pretty early. Um, but yeah, I just want you guys to be aware that we've had a consistent problem. And also uh, the, the unit next to me, we're all double bungalows down here in the circle. And so that's a, that's a rental rental next to me, but I know that they've had problems with theft from increased um, Visibility and traffic from the South Fridley apartments across the Planet Fitness parking that never used to happen when that was a grassy area. So a lot of squirrel lot moments there, but uh, that's, those are a lot of the frustrations that I've been living with, which is why I decided I'd better pay attention to this one. 
you want to speak to the yeah. concerns of the pay? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Stephanie, for your comments and concerns. So the project as designed is, has an enclosure to it. Um, so we do not anticipate much debris um, to come out of the patio. Also, as a private, privately owned restaurant that I'm sure wants to keep a positive reputation, I don't believe they would allow for the littering and they have staff, adequate staff to you know clean up the tables after they're done. Um, in addition to that, and I'm not sure how much it would play into it, but in my in my mind, I think okay, there's a planter area between the patio and the parking that could potentially catch anything as it goes up to the open parking lot. So we really do not anticipate too much litter or clutter from the addition of this patio here. I'm glad you addressed. Okay. That because I it, um, and one additional question is: is it is it your committee? that needs to be aware of the consistent, um, I'm moving so I'm dropping all my furniture off at the plan and fitness. Not specifically the, the planning commission, but Stephanie, we can take your complaints and forward them to the property maintenance code enforcement officials, which resides with the fire department in this case. So that's the property maintenance people. Yeah, okay. they, they enforce our property maintenance code and uh, the dumping and the garbage litter type issues. Um, would they have the ability to, to do inspections and, and issue citations? Um, so we're sorry for those inconveniences and sometimes it's difficult to enforce littering type nuisance complaints because we we don't know who's doing it and it's difficult to, right to catch right. it so no i understand that and you know the mayor did reach out uh i sent pictures and but the next people that move the next end of the month it happens again because there's a pattern and it's consistent now so um you know and i it just uh it's it's a lifestyle now. It's not an inconvenience. There's a difference. Yeah. So it, I think we can make Planet Fitness aware um, of the litter issue uh, and anything on their property. They need to be responsible for cleaning up whether they've created it or not. So That's what the mayor said, too. Yeah. You know, I think they're aware of it. It's just simply a matter of, you know, who do you call and how often do you hire them to... And, 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 you know, well, they set themselves up by building a two-acre parking lot. So it is what it is. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, any additional comment from the public? Uh, any comment from the commissioners or the city staff? Is there any room to put up a small fence between Planet Fitness and La Casita to stop some of the blowage going through? So as part of this proposal, uh, we haven't looked at that. I'm not sure if we could bring up the, the aerial photo. I just need to re-familiarize I can myself. tell you, they do have a fence, but it doesn't go along the whole length of their parking. It stops, and I'm thinking that the fence stops where it does it, it just kind of protects those um, those houses, those residences that are, that are there. And then I believe that that allows them to push snow over on the hill, which might be why that fence stops where it does. It's in, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I wasn't able to attend any of those meetings when they were planning installing Planet Fitness, so I'm not exactly sure and I asked for plans and I never got them. So um, it was kind of after the fact. So, I, and you know, it's it, the fence there is a, a, like a six or eight foot white fence for privacy for those, for those people in those buildings over there. I think that's what it is. Okay. So they have one. It just doesn't go far enough north. <laughs> Insufficient. I, I empathize with you. I guess one of the things that I've noticed in the opening up since COVID is not only is traffic heavier, but the litter is back. So um, that excellent, uh, you know, and thank you for bringing that up because it is a concern with businesses throughout the city that, you know, we have more litter because we're back open for business. So, right. That's true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
uh, again, at this time, if there's no further public comment and no comment from the commissioners, I can read the motion. Close the hearing. Uh, close motion the to close the public hearing and uh, waive the reading of the um, resolution. So a uh, motion to close the public hearing and a motion move to waive the reading of resolution number 2021-P05. There being ample, ample copies available to the public. You can't do it though. You can't make the motion. <laughs> He's asking, asking for, I'm requesting. Oh, for you're a questioning motion. for a motion. I'll make that motion. How's Miss that? My parent, <laughs> or my, I will second that motion. Uh, um, motion seconded by, do I say now, and firsted by Hoyam, Commissioners Hoyam. And uh, a vote. Can we do the ayes and nays? Yes. Uh, all the ayes. Aye. 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 All the nays. Uh, the ayes have it. I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution 2021-P05, approving the site plan for the proposed patio addition to be located at 5085 Central Avenue Northeast at La Casita Restaurant, subject to the conditions listed, the six conditions listed. Second. Uh, uh, then I, we can move to vote here again, another <laughs> verbal vote. Uh, ayes. Aye. Aye. Nays. Nays none. Ayes have it. Perfect. And I think so you are really good at second. This uh, <laughs> motion, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll even second that. A second <laughs> motion to adjourn and a second from uh, St. Alan Novitsky, and I'm going to hit the hammer. <laughs> you didn't vote. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Eyes. We're ready. Eye. Nays. <clears throat> the eyes have it, and now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to give you guys a heads up. Yeah, this is my, this Listen up, got Oh, sorry. We're not quite done. I'm sorry. It was a little premature adjournment. Oh, <laughs> other business. It was blank. I'm sorry. You caught us off. I saw the finish line and I was just, going for it. Just to let you, we will have. <laughs> Seriously. Sorry, guys. Real quick, just just 30 seconds. We will have a meeting on. It is scheduled for August 4th, which is a Wednesday, which is very odd for us. It was a misschedule that happened last year that we're just rolling with for the sake of mm -hmm. not having to do additional paperwork to change the dates. So it's Wednesday, August 4th. Um, tentatively, we have a variance on there um, for a garage. Uh, garage variants for a corner lot that's a very odd shaped lot so and that's on Polk Street and uh, we might be bringing forward some ordinance changes to you guys at least at least two <laughs> I think cool for you to change the date but not for us to change it. I'm sorry <laughs> it was done but I didn't change it <laughs> I was it was already published that the hearing would be on the on the 4th of August get in the way of your job does it <laughs> no, but right. I do have a social life, life too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, guys. Sort of related to the duplex uh, uh, tonight, where's the city on accessory dwelling units? Do we have an official? Not very far. Okay. Um, we, the, the code currently does not allow for accessory dwelling units in the city, but I have people calling me on 37 saying, well, the people, my neighbors across the street are building accessory dwelling units, and I tell them, well, that's Minneapolis. So we don't have anything currently in underplay. I don't know what direction from council is. Um, and I don't know if I've spoken of some of you. I'm very familiar with the legislation regarding accessory dwelling units and how we can make that work, but I'm not sure if it's in the public interest or in the city council's interest. I think I think it's something that we do need to take to the council in a work session setting and get some feedback. It it's a reoccurring um, topic that we deal with, and and I know that it has been brought to our department from council members in the past. To, uh, let's start talking about it, and thinking about it. So I think we'll start there, and then if there's support, uh, craft something that would be reviewed by the planning commission and then ultimately the, the city council. It, do you guys mind sharing your your thoughts and opinions on it with this, you know, just I'm, briefly? I'm sorry, you're talking about exactly? Accessory um, dwelling units, granny flats. Oh, so okay. adding a apartment above a garage in your backyard, mm -hmm. for example. Um, well, you do a really short ceiling and you pull it off because you've got yeah. too much yep. the height for it. I think it's great as long as I don't have to do it for my parents. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, maybe you don't want it allowed, is what you're allowed. saying. Yeah. Yeah. It does give a duplex effect. It really does give a duplex effect. So we'd have to factor that in since we allow for duplexes too. Right. If I could do that on top of my garage, I could live in my garage and rent my house out of the duplex. Yeah. Yep. You know, Tom, Tom, you talked about it earlier, but just kind of increasing a bit of density and increasing some population and tax base. I mean, ADUs are a great way to do that. Yeah, it's know. a good way also to f keep it in the family. I, I see a lot often families building this ADU for their newly wedded child and then moving into the ADU because they get to customize it as they like and allow for the family to grow and on site and have them nearby. So that's what I was used to seeing mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of that. Cousins up in <coughs> Andover, um, well, my aunt and uncle built an ADU for their children who recently got married and because of home prices being so crazy, they're staying there a lot longer than they had ever planned. And yeah. It's a pretty helpful thing to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has a lot of positives if done right. And we also have so many lots that are large, like thinking yeah. like the Reservoir Boulevard area. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's got to be a lot of parts of town where something like that could work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just right. curious. Thanks. No, thank you. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't hear big I, I, opposition. I'm not sure if it's on Minerva's whiteboard. It might actually I could be. add it. I think it is a line item. It's the it. easiest item to add for me. <laughs> We're, we've kind of got a, a running list of uh, updates and ordinance changes that we want to start working on and sure. um, cycling through in, in some of the slower months. So, um, yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. We have a good rest of the month. Well.